Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are, whenever you're watching this, this is Floating in Dreams, and today's video is going to be my top 10 favorite The Body Shop skincare products. Welcome to everybody watching, thank you so very much for being here. I am going to be chatting about my top 10 favorite The Body Shop products that are in the skincare section. I have tried a lot of The Body Shop skincare over the years, and I just thought I could come on here and select my favorites. And in case you're new here and you're unfamiliar with my channel, hi, my name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands. I love coming on here to chat about eyeshadow palettes and Catrice reviews mainly, but I love getting the use out of my makeup as well. And when it comes to skincare, it's a part of beauty where I tend to like use one up and then I repurchase it or I get rid of it after it's done. Um, and I've tried a lot of the body shop over the years. Um, it, it's one of my go-to brands for skincare. And even though I'm not a skincare expert, I have reviewed a lot of skincare over the years and my dry dehydrated sensitive skin isn't always like the best for like testing out so many skincare products in one go. So I like to go back to old favorites all the time and I just thought I could come on here to chat with you about my top 10 favorite The Body Shop skincare products because they are one of my favorite brands. I know that in the YouTube <laughs> influencer realm they aren't chatted about a lot and I have seen people doing videos about them in the past um, but I feel that the focus was on the wrong products because my favorites are definitely different from what a lot of people tend to try from the brand I find um, but yeah so to give you a little bit of a backstory about why I like the body shop for skincare is I already mentioned my skin type, so dry, dehydrated, sensitive skin. And I always mention that I have sensitive skin. And then I sometimes recommend products and people go like, but I have sensitive skin and I could never use that. Here's the thing that you should know about my sensitive skin. When I was in my 20s and I wanted to start using skincare, this was in the early 2000s, there was very little information for me available. So you go to a store, you try things. That's how I got into skincare and everything I would try, even with like any sort of complexion product I would put on, my skin would get red, itchy, bumpy, whatever it was, I would get some form of an allergic reaction to it. Now, in like the past 10 years or so, my skin sensitivity isn't as terrible anymore as it used to, but I'm still very careful with what I am using, how much I'm using, what the concentrations are, how often I use things. Like I cannot just slap something on and let it be done. I have also found through experience that with my skin type, I really need to stick to a skincare product for a longer amount of time very often until I've pretty much used it up, until I can really say whether what it does for me and whether it does anything for me. So I can like a product initially, but if throughout using it, the period I'm using it, I'm starting to notice more bumps on my face, I know that I should not repurchase that product. Did it really do any damage to my skin? Probably not. However, I've never been like to a dermatologist or anything like that because my skin's never been the type where it is recommended to go see someone. I've never had bad acne. I never really had anything. And it wasn't until I found some of the Body Shop products that I found that those didn't aggravate my skin. And I have been able to sort of, well, I wouldn't call it train my skin because I don't think it works that way. But I've sort of been able to, just by using skincare and by like also getting my, my skin getting used to having products sitting on it, I feel a lot of the sensitivities that I struggled with in my 20s, I no longer struggle with now. So maybe it also had to do with hormones, who knows? I've never been able to figure out what it was that caused a lot of it. The only thing I'm still struggling with when it comes to skincare is that the minute I touch my skin, it gets red. But that, that goes in my neck as well. Sometimes, sometimes I sit down to film a video or like my hair is like this in my neck sometimes and then it gets itchy and then I scratch it and I have this really big red mark. And sometimes people who don't know me very well go like, is everything okay with you because your neck is red? And I'm like, don't worry, that's just, that's just the way my skin naturally reacts. I, that happens from head to toe. Like if I scratch my leg, it happens as well. So. For me, 
it's just the body shop was my beginner my step into skincare that allowed me to start exploring skincare more which is why i have always gone back to them trying different products and throughout the years i have just found 10 products that i really really like so this is my top 10. Now I don't have all of the products physically at home at the moment, but I have reviews up for I think all but one product that I have to show you today. So I'll make sure to link everything in the description box down below. And for the products that I don't have here, I'll make sure to pop a picture up on the screen. However, some of those reviews are years old because they are some of the first reviews I ever wrote. So they're not always the best quality, I do apologize. And also the packaging has changed over time. But yeah, one thing that I started off with was the Aloe Vera line. The Body Shop's Aloe Vera line is formulated for sensitive skin. And I already um, like tried it years before, but there was a dermatologist in the Netherlands at some point in time who also said that the aloe vera toner and face wash were really good options for sensitive skin. Um, this is the calming toner. It's fragrance free, no colorants, no preservatives, and it has no alcohol. And this is something that I like to use instead of something like a micellar water sometimes, but I have actually found out that there are other ways to use toners. So I'm curious to see if I can now use this more like I would a toner nowadays. So um, at the, like, this is like such a like 2000s kind of way of doing your skincare, but the idea was you cleanse your face and then you rinse, then you use a toner to neutralize your pH. I think that was the idea. And then your skin is ready for soaking up actual skincare. So that's how I was using this for years. But nowadays it seems to be like more like a first step. Well, is it a last step in a cleansing routine or a first step in a skincare routine? I'm not entirely sure, but I would now just use it by taking a little bit, put it on my hands and then like press it onto my face rather than putting it on a cotton pad um, and then again, you know, rubbing it on my face and making it go very, very red very quickly. I was already holding it up, but another favorite is the Aloe Calming Foaming Wash. I use this in the shower, so if I step in the shower in the morning, this is a great, easy cleanse. I know a lot of people who know anything about skincare will say, don't cleanse your face in the shower because of like the heat that a shower has. But I'm like, my face is going to be wet anyways. Might as well save water. Um, so I love this. And I also use this for taking off makeup when I'm in the shower. It even gets rid of waterproof uh, mascara for sure. Um, I can take off a full face of makeup. I do use like two pumps of this. And it foams up because of the way it is like, like when you pump it out, that's why it starts to foam more so than it actually like having foaming agents in the formula. It's more because of the pump that it comes out as a foam. And this is my favorite one, and I haven't been able to find another cleanser like this that I like more. Shall we stick to cleansers? Because when it comes to cleansers, those are like my favorite products from the body shop, it seems. One that I no longer have in my current uh, like skincare selection, because I just had other things still left, and I don't want it to sit on a shelf for too long, but I know I will be repurchasing it sometime in the future, and that is the Chamomile Cleansing Butter, I think they call it, cleansing oil. So it is the one that comes in the tin. So I have tried all of their Chamomile line, uh, cleansing line, um, including like the eye makeup remover, that was one that I used to use a lot. Um, I've tried the actual oil, but that got very leaky and messy after a while. And I find the one in the tin is just a great one-stop shop. Um, I have other cleansers I also love, but the one from the body shop is the easiest one for me to buy. So I know it will like go back to it. I believe there are, it's available in different sizes. And if I were to repurchase this, I might wanna try and see if I can get an even bigger size because the only downside to this I feel is that you go through it quite quickly. I just, perhaps I just use too much, who knows. Um, but I feel that in order to take off all of my makeup, I do need quite a bit here. But yeah, I do love that one. And then something I have been discovering <laughs> from the body shop are cleansers that I like to use more so as a second cleanse or in the morning time. So I always cleanse my face in the morning uh, just to sort of get my face ready for skincare 
and I have found this one that I really like it, the Oils of Life Intensely Revitalizing Cleansing Oil and Gel. Um, this is pretty oily, like it is more of an oil-based cleanser. Um, so this is great for like a second cleanse uh, for sure, but you can also use this as a first cleanser in the morning. I used up an entire tube of this and this is the one that I repurchased because I knew that I was going to love it. Um, but now that I found this, I'm not sure if I would repurchase this one again, but I also really like their CBD Soothing Oil Balm Cleansing Mask. So this is like a two-in-one. I'm just using it as a cleanser, but this is a product that you can lather on and you can leave it on for a little bit longer. I think it's like five minutes or so. What does it say here? Uh, warm in hands, massage. Yeah, you can leave it on for three to five minutes and then rinse it off. Um, so you could use this for a, for a deeper cleanse if you'd like. I just whack it on and wash it off straight away just to get rid of that first like oiliness in the morning. It's been working really well. It cleans my face and the new CBD line, I think it's not that new anymore, but I've been liking some of the products in this line and I definitely would like to try some more. It's not a very extensive line in the, in the entire The Body Shop range, um, but these products are formulated for dehydrated skin which is rare because very often things are geared at dry skin, but not dehydrated skin. That's two different things. So that's why I'm very happy they do this line now. And I have really been liking this cleanser. Next up is another product that I have, I no longer have here, but it's their vitamin C energizing face mist. I'm not sure if it's still called that, um, but this was a product that they discontinued and then they brought it back. So I think it's been reformulated. Now on a lot of like skincare websites, this is just called water with a fragrance, which it kind of is, but I like misting my face with a face mist in the morning before I do my skincare, just to add a little bit of hydration at first, like a little bit of wetness. Could you just splash water in your face or could you just mix something yourself with a bit, a bit of glycerin and water and spray that? I'm pretty sure you could, um, but I really like the zesty scent this has, and I've been using it for years. I think I've used up three or four bottles of this. Um, I'm currently using a different one. I've been trying some other things to see if this is still my favorite, and I'm thinking it still is, but I'm currently using one from Lush, which is another brand that if you don't like fragrance and they're not known for being like great for sensitive skin, but I'm using their Eau de Roma, I think, or Eau Roma, something like that. Um, and that I feel is perhaps a little bit like even more hydrating for my skin. So I may want to repurchase that as well. So then I have two favorites, but I've tried the Mario Badescu one that a lot of people were always raving about. Didn't like it, still love the, the Body Shop one. I've tried some of the other, like they did some, an entire line with different fragrances. Started like, started on those as well, but that was when they had discontinued the vitamin C one. But now that they've brought that back, that's still my favorite. So yeah, the vitamin C energizing face mist is one that I have always loved. Now a category from the body shop that I struggle finding favorites in, and that's moisturizers. I have tried, I think, save for like the tea tree line and the seaweed line, which are geared more towards oily skin or combination skin. Um, I think I've tried all of their moisturizers. And the Aloe one was okay. The vitamin E emulsion was okay, but nothing was rich enough for the nighttime. And for the daytime, I just felt they were a little lackluster. So I've always been having other moisturizers that are favorites. I love going to La Roche-Posay, and I also really like the Ambriolis uh, Le Concentré. Uh, those are like some of my favorite moisturizers in case you were wondering. But recently, currently in my skincare routine, and I've just used this up <laughs> in my skincare routine, are these two. And especially this was an unexpected favorite. This is the CBD Replenishing Moisture Cream. Now I already mentioned that the CBD line has been formulated to be good for people with dehydrated skin. So maybe that's why I liked it so much, but I use this as a nighttime moisturizer and I couldn't get enough of this stuff. Again, I'm not entirely sure, like in my review on my blog, I do go into the ingredients list a little bit, and the CBD that this talks about having is very low on the list, but it has some other things in it 
which is why I probably like it. I believe it has quite a bit of shea butter in. Um, so yeah, it's quite a rich cream. This is not something you're gonna like if you have oily skin for sure, um, but this was really nice. It was rich enough for me to work as a nighttime moisturizer, even in the winter time, and that's rare. And then I have the Vitamin C Glow Protect, uh, Glow Protect Lotion with an SPF of 30. And I had this sitting on my shelves thinking, when I can use this in the spring summer season, I'm going to use it because it does have a bit of SPF in. With a moisturizer, do you use enough SPF to really protect your skin from the sun? Probably not. So I like to go in with a separate SPF on top. And that's one of the reasons why I also struggle finding a good SPF because I find it just sits on my skin and it doesn't work well under makeup. Again, the La Roche-Posay Unperfumed Mattifying Gel SPF from their Anthelius line. That's my favorite SPF for the face. Um, but yeah, this has been, an, I, I, I've been liking this a lot. I just think that with this, my skin definitely had to get used to it because of the vitamin C that this has. This did make my skin look quite red when I first started using it. But now that I've used about half the tube, I can find, I can really see that this is a little thicker than most moisturizers I would like to use in the daytime, but it still sinks in really nicely. And with the vitamin C range, I have really found that some products in it work really well for me, whereas others are just too much for me. But this is really hitting that sweet spot. And as I already mentioned, very often I find that if I stick to a product, and I let my skin get used to it, that like after a week or two, I'm usually good. And with many skincare products, you can you know, like, they last like two, two to three months usually. So very often I find that that's a good one. So the vitamin C one is really growing on me. I'm starting to love it more every single time I use it. An OG favorite, I think this is my third or fourth bottle, but again, in this category, in my skincare routine, I have been trying other things. So this has just been sitting on a shelf waiting to be used, but it's the Vitamin E Overnight Serum in Oil. Um, this is one that when I discovered this, my dry skin was like, wowza, this is what I need. So this is an oil-based serum, but I use it as I would a face, face oil. So I will first apply serum and then an oil, and then I put my moisturizer on top. I'm sure that that's not the way you're supposed to go. I think you're supposed to do oils last, but I feel I need the oils more so than I do the moisturizer, if that makes sense. I'm not sure. It has to do with like the, is it, what's it called? Eclusivity? I'm not sure if that's the word. Maybe I'm making that up, but like the thickness, like it's like the chemistry thing, like first the thinnest layer and then you build it up and how thick the layer is. But that's why I like this one so much because it's a serum in oil. It is oil-based, but it's not as rich as a traditional face oil would be. It still has a bit of lightness to it, mean, meaning it sinks into the skin very, very easily. Now the vitamin E line, just like the vitamin C, is quite heavily fragranced, so that's something you need to be aware of. Um, so if that's something you're sensitive to, then don't use it. Um, but I do really enjoy the scent of the vitamin E line. It smells like clean babies. That's what it smells like. Another product from the vitamin E line that I have repurchased time and time and time and time again is the uh, vitamin E eye cream. This is a great um, like morning time eye cream. I don't find this to do enough for me for the nighttime. So when I use this, I always have another eye cream in my skincare routine for the nighttime. This is how you get to a 10 step skincare routine people. But yeah, um, I do use this in the mornings when I use it. I'm currently still using something else and I have some other eye creams to try now. So this is probably again, just going to sit around. But with a lot of these body shop products, what I tend to do is that whenever I then need, need to do with the body shops uh, like shop, I will just pop them into my cart. I buy them, I keep them closed and sealed. And that, that way you can, uh, you know, still use it like a year down the line, you're gonna be fine because these things have a massive like shelf life for sure. And finally, the last product I wanted to mention here are face masks. Now the vitamin E sink in moisture sleeping mask is one that I used to love in the summertime as a nighttime moisturizer. I find that in the summer when we do get warmer days that a lot of skincare just kind of like, I put it on and it doesn't want to sink into my skin. 
Whereas with this, I felt it was a good one-stop shop and it still made my skin feel hydrated. However, mine has been around too long. It's been sitting on a shelf open for too long. So I need to chuck this after filming this video. I kind of kept it around so I could film this. Um, but yeah, this is nice. This is just, it's not even a mask. It's texture wise, it reminds me a lot of that watermelon sleeping mask from Glow Recipe. It really reminds me of that. It has this jelly kind of texture and it then very much nicely hydrates. So yeah, if you don't like the watermelon scent like I do, but you like to smell like clean baby bottoms in the summertime, then this is a good one. Uh, but yeah, I didn't manage to use that up before it expired. Um, but one of my favorite face masks from them is their Tea Tree Skin Clearing Clay Mask. I am not a masker, I'm just not. The only time I will use a face mask is if my skin is quite congested, which it hardly ever is. <laughs> Um, I have a couple of bumps on my chin and like a zit somewhere on my forehead right now. Um, but that's, you know, like, I've got dry skin. I hardly ever have any sort of blemishes. But when my skin gets a little crazy, I like to put in something like this. Um, I do enjoy the tea tree line. There used to be a BB cream in this line that I loved. They also did a really good primer. Now I know that tea tree isn't everyone's favorite ingredient. It can be quite harmful depending on, you know, what you read um, and everything like that but for me because it's a mask and I rinse it off and I don't use this every single day like I don't see the point in face masks every single day to begin with I'd rather have like a good solid skincare routine than like trying to amp it up with a mask every single day um, I find them usually too strong too aggravating no matter the mask I've tried also the ones that are supposed to be like more gentle but then I I just don't see the point so if I want to go for a mask, I want it to like suck everything out of my skin. And then this one is a good one. So thank you very much for watching this video, everybody. I really hope you got something out of it. Remember, I'm not a skincare specialist at all. This is just based on my experience using these products. That's why I also wanted to let you know a little bit where I'm coming from with some of these products as well. And um, yeah, without further ado, thank you so very much for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos a week and I want to talk more about skincare on this channel, but usually those videos don't do very well, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but if you have any ideas of skincare that I can talk about, um, then definitely let me know. But because I have sensitive skin, I cannot do skincare content all the time because I cannot switch my skincare routine up like every week or however quickly you need to do that. So I tend to really like use something up, write a review. So if you are interested in skincare content from me, then definitely check out my blog, which is linked in the description box down below because I make a um, skincare review every single Friday in case you didn't know. So I hope you'd like to come back for more at some point and then I hope to see you in my next video. Take care everybody, have a good day. Bye.